Hello, this video is intended as a pre-training video to familiarize new users with the Sitecore XM Cloud platform prior to their in-person training. When users first click on the Sitecore login, they will see a page like this. You'll log in with your MSU email address as our system is connected to MSU's two-step Okta authentication system. The system will generate the MSU login page. After logging in, it will take you to the Sitecore XM Cloud portal page. Here you have the global toolbar and the apps panel. You may not see both apps. We will be working in Prod, the production environment. You'll click production and then open the appropriate app. Pages is an app that allows you to edit with what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG editing right on a page. Most content authors will do the majority of their work within pages. Explorer is another tool that removes the visual formatting and looks more like a database entry. You can use Explorer for some features such as adding a YouTube link for a video embed. Content Editor may be familiar for users from our previous platform, Sitecore XP. There are some features that will require use of Content Editor, such as editing page names for navigation. Forms is a new feature that will allow you to create forms for use within your pages. We're going to start with the Pages app. The app opens in a new tab. Along the top here, you'll see your local toolbar, the right hand pane, the left pane, the side toolbar, and this middle area is called the content editor or the canvas. If at any time you need to reload the canvas, you can click this icon here and it will reload the content without reloading the whole system. On the local toolbar, you'll navigate to your specific website that you are working to edit. Now this left side pane shows the site tree with all the pages I have within this website. If I click to the components tab, I can see all the components that are available to place on the page I'm currently looking at. I'll go back to the site tree and now I'll create a page. I can either click create a page here, or if I want this page to be nested under another page, I'll navigate to that appropriate page and click the three dot icon next to it, then click create a sub page. From here, I'll choose a page template. Page is a basic page layout with full width content canvas. Two thirds page has a sidebar column on the right side that can be used for certain components, such as an aside or contextual or curated navigation. Landing page templates are available for use when you need a very streamlined experience, such as a branded header and footer, no navigation, and limited content to direct users' attention to a particular call to action. These are great templates to use when designing a landing page for an inbound web or email campaign. We're going to go with a basic page. I'll click the template and click select. Now I'll name my page and hit enter. The system will generate the new page. Now I can add my content. There are two basic ways to add content. Anywhere you see a purple plus icon, you can drop a component. I'll click and the list will give me the available components that I can add here. In this case, I don't need a hero banner, so I'll just start with the page title. The system takes a moment to generate the component and adds it to the page. Because I used a page title component, this title is already pre-filled. Now you'll notice that there's no plus sign below this. So how can I add a new component? That's easy with drag and drop. I'll go to the components tab. I'll choose the component I wish to add to the page, such as this MSU rich text, and I'll drag it into place. Purple lines appear showing where I can drop the component. 
the bolder line will be where the component is added. If I try to place it in an area where it can't be dropped, these lines will turn to red. I have to assign a content item so that this component knows what data to pull in. I'll hit the plus sign, choose the appropriate content item type, and create a unique name within the page. I'll hit enter, then click assign. The system generates the component and adds it to the page. Now I can click in here, add and format my text. If I want to style the component, I can go to this right side panel and add advanced styling or add padding above or below or to the sides of the component. Different components will also have variants, which you'll be able to choose from the advanced styling panel. Those create different types of layouts and configurations for specific components. If I'd like to preview the page that I'm looking at, I can do so in several different ways. I can use device preview, mobile, tablet, general view, or this drop down to access additional sizes. And that will show me what this page is going to look like on different devices. It's important to check for the different device experience so that you know what your audience is going to see on a website. I can also click the eyeball icon over here on the right to open this page in a new tab. This will give me an approximation of what the page will look like when it is live on the website. Now I can publish the page. This drop down next to publish shows my published settings. I can choose to publish only this page or any pages that are nested under it. In this case, I only need to publish this page, so I'll leave the settings as is and I'll click start publish. When the page is published successfully, a pop-up message appears at the top of the page. In cases where a component requires editing in Content Editor, you can access it from this site. Go to the nine dot icon in the top left corner to open the switcher. Choose the environment, prod, and then Content Editor. Content Editor will open in a new tab. You'll navigate to the page by first drilling down into MSU and then into the site that you're working on. From here, expand home to view your pages and a particular page and its data folder to see the content on that page. Clicking on any of these components will open the data panel so that you can edit and make changes. Once changes have been made, hit save, then close content editor, return to pages, and refresh the canvas. I hope this demonstration of some of the basic functionalities within XM Cloud has been helpful. Your live training will go deeper into how to use particular components and how to add content to the page, as well as give you an opportunity to ask questions from our staff.